important to all right so you should see come up on your screen the uh the little blurb that says please hit record or it's okay to record yeah. um so you guys are going to be basically watching a webinar that was conducted by mls pin directly and what we did was uh we recorded the webinar and it's really very good if you're needing to learn the ins and the outs of the mls i i think it's a phenomenal webinar in fact i mean i've been doing this for 28 years and i learned a couple of things myself that i didn't even know that the mls did so so i'm going to go ahead and uh share my screen i'll play the webinar um i'm just going to stay on silent but if you guys have a question that you don't that you don't think she's addressing Mm -hmm. Let me know, just unmute yourself, let me know, and I'll pause the video, and then we can talk about it. Okay. All right, so, so don't feel like you just have to sit and watch this stupid video, you know, <laughs> let me know if, if I can help you in any way, okay? All right, thanks. All right, looks like we got uh, one more joining us. Snuck in under the bell. <laughs> let me just make sure that her audio is okay, then we'll keep going. Alona just wanted to make sure that your audio was okay so that you could hear what we were talking about. Yes, good morning, Scott. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing well. Doing well. It's a sunny day and I'm on the right side of the ground, so can't complain, right? <laughs> Happy to hear. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So I'm going to go ahead and play a webinar. I was just telling Christina and, and Houston that um Feel free to interrupt or say, hey, Scott, I got a question and I'll stop the webinar and then we can address the question. But this is a uh, webinar that was done by MLS PIN. And as I mentioned before, I think it's very helpful. It's a wonderful uh, informational piece. And I also learned things uh, from that seminar, even though I've been using the system for almost 30 years. So it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. And like I said, feel free to uh, interrupt if you have any questions on it, okay? Thank you. And bear with me while I put this up. Users, more experienced users on yes, yes. in attendance today. Everybody's yeah. good? So let's just yeah. kind of yeah. talk about Pinergy and what Pinergy is. You might hear some folks refer to us as MLS PIN or MLS Property Information Network. That is the company name. And we do have our corporate website here, mlspin.com. The database that you folks are probably going to likely use every day for your day to day business is Pinergy. So, Pinergy is just that it's a database that's set up to offer cooperation and compensation amongst our 45,000 subscribers. On your Pinergy homepage, folks, just some nice to knows while we're here. Your widgets are movable. So if there are things that you'd like to look at, things that you use frequently, you can drag and drop and move your widgets around. You can collapse widgets. So if there are items you do not use, you can hit the little chevron in the upper right-hand corner, and that will condense your window down. Also, on the right-hand side of your screen, typically, unless you've moved your widget, you have this Quick Links widget you can customize and add links to pieces of Pinergy that you utilize on a regular basis or third-party products that you utilize. So you would hit that blue button to add or remove, check off the areas of Pinergy or the third-party products that we have a, a link out to right to your Pinergy homepage and save. And you also have 
a custom quick links option, which works a little bit differently than that quick links option. Custom quick links gives me the opportunity to add or remove websites to other URLs, other websites that I go to on a daily basis. And you can enter up to 25 URLs onto the Pinergy homepage. That is a time saver for you folks. And as we go along today, I am big on time savers. I like saving you time. So you're gonna hear me mention, here's a time saver for you. Initially, this might take a little bit of time to get it set up, but once you do, so you enter your link here. Maybe your company site, your social media site, you go to Massland Records every day, the Registry of Deeds website. And we add, and we hit done. And now when I click on that link, right from my Pinergy homepage, it opens up a new tab to that other website. So registry of deeds, that certainly might be something that you use often. And as I said, you can add anything in here. It will end up being a time saver for you in the future. We're gonna transition over to some options and settings. And then we'll dive into our contact management system. Um, and we will talk about how your contacts are actually accessing Pinergy. So options and settings in the upper right-hand corner. This profile tab is basically um, when somebody searches for you in Pinergy under the agent office roster, whatever you have listed here, will display when they retrieve your name under the agent office roster. So you have the opportunity to upload a photo here. You can change the phone number that appears after your name on a listing sheet or when somebody retrieves your information under your agent office roster. We can add a fax, a website, If you ever need to update your email address, this is the area that you would go to do that. We will send you an email confirming that you want to make that update to your email address. Once you confirm that, we will get our records updated. And then you can add an email signature. So every time you are emailing out of Pinergy, it will incorporate that email signature. Time saver for you. Password, if you get a notification that your password needs to be updated, which we do require, mandatory password changes. This is the area that you can go to do that. During our time together today, I'm gonna to mention uh, one of our newest features in the Pinergy system. You have the opportunity to receive text alerts on up to 50 properties that you are watching. In order for me to receive text alerts, I have to set my listing watch text alerts up here. And that again is found under options and settings. So you would enter a phone number and authorize. My phone number is already authorized, so if I hit that, it will tell me my phone number is already authorized. Um, but for you folks, if you haven't utilized this yet, you will get a text asking that you confirm that you want to start receiving text messages. And then once you're viewing a listing, there's a watch button that will give you the opportunity to get a text alert anytime there is a status change made to that particular listing. And as I said, we will walk through that once we take a peek at a listing sheet a little bit down the road. Custom coverage areas. 
this too is going to be a time saver for you. So we're going to talk about the search page as well. And really, um, you have the opportunity to search the 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts every day. Um, you can also search by a county. What the custom coverage area gives me the opportunity to do is to narrow down a list of cities and towns that I do business in on a regular basis. So I no longer have to scroll through all of Massachusetts or all of a county. I can just come here and hit new and select the cities and towns I do business in on a regular basis. So this will be a time saver for you as well. Name it and save. And you can see I have several areas. So maybe in the summer, I go to the western part of the state or I go to the Cape and the Islands. Um, and sometimes I spend time in, in central mass. So I have all of these defined custom coverage areas that I can just grab and pick out the cities and towns I'm usually working within. Font and report options. You can add a header and a footer to your listing sheets. And you will always have the choice to include the header and the footer. So even though we're creating it here, there's a checkbox option. Maybe on an occasion you don't want to send the header and the footer, you can just deselect that. But every time you print, email, and PDF your listing sheets, if you have the option selected, it will send out with your header and your footer. Other programs, when you pull up a listing sheet, by default, you have three mapping options selected, Bing Maps, MapQuest, and Google Maps. If you have a preference for one of these over the others, you can go in and choose whatever you'd like to appear when you retrieve the information on a listing sheet and save it, okay? Settlement Room is a third-party product. Um, I believe you have to have a, a subscription with those folks. So if you use that product, you can select it and have it appear as well and just make sure to save. Login history. This gives us information. Really, it's utilized on our end if you're having difficulties. Um, our technical support department might take a peek at this if you're calling in. And then contact default. So we are gonna cover this now before we transition into how to set up a contact in Pinergy. This area represents global options. So here we are saying in general, this is how I would like the information to flow to my customers. As we get into a contact record, we have autonomy to change these defaults for an individual. And much of this is intuitive, but I'm gonna run through each item. Display addresses. You folks have the opportunity to allow or deny the property address to display to your contacts. Display open house info. This is asking if you'd like the three little balloons with the open house date and time to display with your contact matches if an open house is happening. Email when no matches. If I set this to yes, basically my customers on the days that they may not have a new property match will receive an email in the morning simply saying just that, you have no new property matches today. We all know we've experienced quite a shortage of inventory, so it's likely um, there's gonna be an occasion that your customers 
don't have any matches to their search criteria. For many of your customers, they're probably not going to want to get an email from you unless there's something to see. So for this, this might be one of those occasions where you know you have someone who expects an email every day or, or they think you've forgotten about them. You might set your default to no and change this to yes under that person's individual account. Photo summary report. Folks, this is important, really important. This wasn't offered um, up until, gosh, I don't know if it's probably six, seven, eight years ago now. So because it wasn't previously offered, when you go under your accounts, this might be set to no. And if it's set to no, your customers are just going to see one line of information when they receive their daily update or their 15 minute update. We're going to talk about frequency in a moment. I think we can all agree consumers like photos. I like photos. I'm sure you folks like photos too when you're viewing information. It kind of quickly helps you figure out do I want to look further or is this one we can kind of bypass. So if we set this to yes, when your customers receive their email, it's going to look similar to this. So it will add a photo in with a little bit of information about the property. They can click and go over to your virtual office website to review that listing match. Okay, so I would definitely recommend double checking your accounts and if you need to get that updated to yes. Allow reverse prospecting. If this is set to yes, you are basically giving a listing agent permission to reach out to you directly to seek to facilitate the sale of a listed property. Okay, and all that basically means is I have a customer who received a property in a daily update, and I'm saying to the listing agent of that property, Yes, you can reach out to me. They will never see your client's information to alert me to things like open houses, price changes, status changes on that specific listed property. Okay. And you can set this up per individual. You might have that buyer who's missed out on a bunch of homes. So you want to allow for reverse prospecting and that gives a listing agent the ability to communicate to you, you know, maybe a property was contingent, deal fell apart. They're going to use that tool to reach out to the folks who allow reverse prospecting or a hot new property comes on the market and the listing agent alerts you to the fact that they're going to have a twilight open house tonight. You can bring your customer by. And not that you're not going to be paying attention to the system. Um, of course you are, but this might be a good tool to open those lines of communication, especially where inventory has been so low. Send agent daily receipt. When you set this to yes, you're going to get one email in the morning with all of your active contacts in there activity, how many new matches they've received. And then down below that email frequency for new property matches, we only ever offered daily years ago. So again, this might be still set to daily under your accounts. So you definitely want to double check this. As I mentioned earlier here, we are setting up global options. So we're saying in general, this is how I want the information to flow to a customer. Never, you're likely not going to choose that. Um, 15 minutes hourly, daily, weekly, every Friday, monthly, first day of the month. You can change 
this frequency per search. So let's say I choose 15 minutes. 15 minutes keeps you competitive with all of the other syndicator sites that pull our information every 15 minutes. Um, or the company websites, agents' websites, pulling our information every 15 minutes. Your consumers have a computer in their hands, right? They have their smartphones. Um, and so they have the opportunity to go in and search all of these other syndicator sites for properties. You don't want them to find 123 Main Street on realtor.com. You want to be the source of the information. So when you set them up for that 15 minute update, you have to remember a couple of things. It will not go out to your customers. Nothing will go out to them unless there is something new, right? So even if email with no matches is set to yes, and I have a 15 minute update, the customer is only going to receive an email if there is something new to show them, okay? Um, as soon as a new listing is added and it meets your customer's criteria, it's going to exist on their list of results. Everything in Pinergy happens real time and we are the source of the data. So sometimes people will say to me, well, you know, Jeannie, how do I kind of um, persuade a customer to stay with Pinergy and not go to a third party site? Well, I would definitely set them up for the 15 minute update, but I would remind folks that we are the source of the data. So if they got an email at 11.30, five new properties came on, they're gonna get another email at 11.45. But let's say they're even just a daily update. If they go back to the email that they received in the morning, they're going to have those five new matches on their list of results that they can access. Okay, so everything happens real time. If you are in your contact defaults and you weren't aware of some of these defaults, you're setting this up for anybody new here forward. We will go into a global area where you can kind of update existing contacts in just a little bit. Um, so I, I don't want you to think because you've updated it here that you've updated it for people who exist. I will show you how to do that once we get into the contact section. So I'm gonna save. If you've made changes, you wanna be sure to hit that save. If there are any questions, please feel free to get those sent. So let's talk about, we saw this email basically the contact management system in Pinergy. We're utilizing that to set up our, typically it's gonna be your buyers, to receive listing updates in whatever frequency we've selected, okay? So I set them up in the system. I attach a search, which we're gonna walk through how to do all of those steps in a couple of moments, and then the system's automatically going to start to send things out, which is fantastic. That means I can spend less time at my computer, more time with my customers. I don't have to manually search for my clients, okay, once we take those steps. They receive an email. They click on a property match in that email, and they're being directed over to your virtual office website to review those property matches. So we're gonna actually switch gears and I'm first gonna show you what this looks like from the contacts perspective. So they click on a property match in that email. They're being logged in automatically to my virtual office website to view property matches. And bear with me one second. <laughs> 
I was hoping that wouldn't bump, bump me out. Um, this is something that your contacts typically won't have to do. They bypass the step when they click on a match in their email, okay? So if they're going from a computer, as you just saw me do, if I opened up Outlook, I clicked on an email in Outlook, it's gonna take me over to my agent's virtual office website. This is pretty basic. I'm gonna show you how you can make some quick customizations in just a couple of moments. So on a computer, they're gonna see this one line display. If they are viewing this from a mobile device, so if I'm reviewing these matches via my phone, it's actually gonna bring me to something called a card view, which I do think is a little bit of a prettier display. They can identify homes as a favorite here. They can request showings. So they can type you a message. They can tell you their availability, which is nice. We send emails with this information to you four times an hour. Okay, it's really important for you to be able to see that your customer is interested in seeing this property so you can reach out and get that showing set up. They can delete properties. They have a mortgage calculator. They have all of the mapping options that you have set up under your options and settings. So for me, I chose Google Maps, but if you had MapQuest and Bing Maps also selected, they would see that here as well. They can share the listing. So they can email, they can copy the link, they can email myself as their agent. Scroll through quickly and see the photos. And they can also click on the address and pull up a public report. Okay. So they get a good deal of information here. They can leave you feedback, folks. And the easiest way to see what feedback has been left is via email. We sent emails four times an hour. So showing request feedback, that's the easiest way to get the information. If your customer is going from a computer and you really want them to use this card view because it's prettier, um, it's a nicer display. And again, it incorporates photos, which we know consumers like. There's this button here that says card view you would likely have to tell them that exists, um, but if they click on that, it'll change that one line over to the card view. So before we head into contacts and setting up a contact, I do wanna jump over to the Vow site so we can talk about some quick customizations for you. So under tools, we're gonna to go to virtual office web. And right off the bat, up at the top of the page here, Keller Williams does have a stock theme. So there's a button that says load a stock theme. And you can make that selection. And then it's gonna pull your company colors right into the page. Okay, so that's kind of a quick and easy um, customization that will brand the virtual office web to your office. And the other quick customization that you can do here where it says no photo, if you've uploaded a photo, 
under Options and Settings, our Profile tab, which we talked about a little bit earlier, you're going to have the opportunity to pull that roster image in and save. So another quick customization. Are you guys hearing any any volume? No. Not right now. No. Not right now. On the left hand side of the screen here. Can you hear it now? There we go. You add links to your virtual office web. So maybe um, you want to add your company website. Sorry. If you click, there's a little earth with a link. Link name. You want them to know if they click on this, this is where they're going to be directed to. And then you would enter the URL below that. Frame and link is going to keep my side menu to the left and open up that website to the right. Open link in new window. If I make that selection, it's going to open up the link in a completely separate window. If you can, and if if the website allows it, I would do the frame and link so they remember, oh, I was on Jeannie's website and I just went over to her company site. So if they need to get back, they want to take a peek at listings, they can do that. So I'm going to save that. And above the earth with the link is a page. You can go in and add a page of content. And for this, I would be the author of the content. So I'm not directing folks to another website, though technically I guess you could on a page, but maybe I'm an expert about oceanfront homes. Um, maybe I have a page of testimonials, or I want to include my agent resume. You can do that, all of that, with the page of content. And for this, because this might take some um, thought, before you make it live and available to consumers. You can always make this an inactive link and save it. So nobody's going to have access to that until, you know, they decide or you decide it's ready to show, then you can make it an active link that people would be able to click on and read the information. Okay, so you have the opportunity to add links to other websites or pages of content. And then oftentimes I get the question, Jeannie, if I set somebody up as a contact, do they have the opportunity to search outside of what I've set them up for? Um, technically, no, not unless you activate it. So there's this search for homes option. And this is basically coming up and telling me I haven't defined um, an IDX search area. And that basically should be a list per MLS pin rules and regulations, a list of cities and towns that I am ready, willing, and able to show property in. So if you're ready, willing, and able, um, to go to the western part of the state, Central Mass, the North Shore, then you can list all of those cities and towns. Okay, but if you just want to stick, say, in Essex County, you bump those 
all over. And save. And now we can make that an active link. There are some other um, modifications that you can make under the IDX search options. Go to the search tab here. You can choose to allow sold information to also display. By default, it will not. So you can say yes to that if you want to and go back five years. You have different template options. So this basically represents how it will display to the consumer when they click on the search for homes tab. And before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna go back to that IDX main. You do have a Keller Williams option here as well. So a quick customization for you. If you do that, the colors um, and templates and things of that nature have already been selected for you. When you get to the results tab, just a couple of things here to be aware of. Your report type. You can change that from a one line to a summary photo. And also, by default, we do not show the property addresses. So I've been with MLS PIN actually uh, my 16 year anniversary was over the weekend, so a while now. Many years ago, folks, the address keeps on coming up, so I just kind of want to give you some background with that. Many years ago, but not too many, we did not allow the display of property addresses on third party sites. And we know now property addresses do display on third party sites, um, but we still have it defaulted in many situations to not display the property address. So I keep on pointing it out because I want you to be aware of that, um, that you do have to select yes in order for that property address to display. And you have to save the changes, be sure to save them. On the details page, you have a couple of different template options. Again, we have the opportunity to display the address there if we choose to. And then you would save your changes. And to the right of that details, there's a featured listings option. You see your KW icon there. This um, by default is gonna display your office's listings. And I don't know if anybody noticed, but I'm gonna go back to that line display here. Featured listings is an active link when somebody is directed to my virtual office website. Okay, so you want to be sure this is set up as you want it to display. Now, you folks do have branches to your office, so you have the opportunity to set this to display just my listings. It defaults to my office's listings, but you can also have it display my firm's listing. So, all of those branch offices, um, you could display your firm's listings. Featured row color, you can change that. Typically it will be pink. List separately, yes or no. If I set this to yes, and somebody goes in and they search in Beverly. So they do a search for homes. My firm has listings in Beverly it will actually take those listings um, out of the results and put them to the top of the page as a featured listing, okay? When you set list separately to yes. Underneath my listings, you have the option to show a public report instead of some brief information if it's not your listing. 
okay? So when I am the listing agent, I have um, the discretion to say, yes, I want a public report and all of those data fields to display to a consumer, okay? The search for homes that we are talking about, and we're gonna jump back to contacts in just a moment. We're in here and I'm showing you how you can enable this so your contacts have the opportunity to search outside of the parameters you set them up for. I want you to be aware of a couple of things. The most important thing to be aware of is this, that search for homes function, is really intended to be something that is populated on a real estate website where consumers who you may or may not have a relationship with are searching for properties for sale, okay? Um, and because of that, when they pull up listing information, the list office information is going to display. So we're talking about contacts and those contacts you do have a direct relationship with. If you enable that search for homes and provide them the ability to search beyond the parameters you set them up with, when they are pulling up these listing results, they will be seeing list agent, list office information. And this information that we allow to get pulled to other, your company websites, your agent websites, um, we limit the data fields that can display on those third-party sites. So we have a list of acceptable data fields. And that's why if I set this to yes, I as the listing agent have control to display all of the data fields in a public report instead of just some brief information um, that a consumer would see otherwise. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna save that here. And I'm gonna head back to the tools and virtual office web. So search for homes, even though we modified items there, it's still inactive. You do not have to make this an active link. I just want you to know uh, this is how you would give your customers autonomy to search beyond the parameters you set them up for, we save it. Now they would be able to do that. Please be aware that if you do this, you're not capturing any listings that they're looking at or anything of that nature either. Okay, so when we transition over to contacts, which we are going to do in a moment, you can see analytics about how many times they're logging in, what properties they're viewing, how many times they viewed a property. If they're utilizing this link on your VOW site, you don't capture that information, okay? There's no data there for you. All right. So this is what my VOW site would look like now with just some, some quick, basic customization. Okay, I'm not sure why that link didn't work. Let's see. Let me try one thing. And then we'll switch gears over to contacts. So please let me know if you have any questions, folks. Um, at the end of our time together, and I'm just giving you some really basic, quick information. We do have videos pertaining to the virtual office web if you really wanted to dig a little bit deeper. The other bit that you can do with the virtual office web is purchase a domain name and point that domain name to the virtual office web to make it a website that's accessible um, on the internet to anybody. Okay, so you do have that opportunity. And if you're interested in moving forward with that, 
at the end of our time together, I am going to give you information for our customer care team. Our technical support department would be the ones that actually would be able to assist you in getting that all connected together. So a couple of different uses for that vow. So now we're going to head over to our contacts and we're going to talk about setting up a contact, attaching your searches to a contact, and how to really get some insight into what your customers are looking at. I just want to mention this little push pin before it goes away. This is an indicator to me that this customer is in the system currently on my virtual office website. Okay, so that push pin means they're logged into my vow and viewing matches currently. Much of what I talk about this afternoon is an option, not anything that you have to use. So there's a lot of nice to know in here, but not things that are necessary for you to go in and get your customers set up. Okay, I'll let you know when things are mandatory and when they are not. Categories, not mandatory. This is an option available to you. And it's basically a filtering system for you. So when I click on categories under your accounts, if you haven't used this before, you're gonna have a category for buyers and sellers. You can see I've created several other categories, months, um, that I've had buyers in, areas that the customers are looking within, property types they're searching for. So all this really does is it gives me the opportunity to come in to my contacts and say, you know what, today I just need to see my March 2021 buyers. So I'm going to check off that box and I'm going to filter it just so I can see those folks. And not only do I want to see my March 2021 buyers, I want to see the buyers in Shrewsbury. So Ray and Jean fall into both of those categories. Then I would have the opportunity, I could check them both off. I could send them an email, which is a BCC email. Ray doesn't see Jean's information. Jean doesn't see Ray's information. So I could send them both a happy one year anniversary of home ownership. You can also create postcards, um, mailing labels rather from the system under the print function. So you have a mailing labels option if you wanted to send happy one year anniversary of home ownership. So think of categories as a filtering system for you. To create a new category, you would go to new categories. Once you hit categories, and this is however you want to identify with your customers. So we're creating the categories here. We haven't attached them to our customers yet. I'll walk you through that when we're setting up the contact. So instead of seeing 100 people under here, I saw an awesome property come on the market in Beverly. I just want to see my Beverly single family customers. I'm going to check everybody off, email them, check out this listing on Essex Street in Beverly. We need to go see this property today. Okay, but don't feel obligated to use it. It's a tool if you want to. Now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes. How do we add a new contact into the system? So we're gonna to go to new, left-hand corner gray bar. And it brings you to an information tab and you probably look at this tab and think, oh my goodness, what are they making me enter here? The good news is, folks, there are only two required fields in order to be able to save a contact and move forward and attach a search. 
Okay. So you have first name and last name. of the main contact. Technically, I don't have to move forward from here. I can just enter Anne's information and save it, and I could attach a search. Most of us want the system to automatically email out listing results. So if that's the case, we're going to enter Anne's email address in here and save the record. So we have the option to save and save, which will allow us to move forward, or save and close, which will take us out of here and put us back to the contacts. So we're gonna save and save. Those are the only fields I have to enter in order to be able to move forward. I can choose to enter a phone number, address, if I'm going to use those, utilize the mailing labels, I have to enter, of course, an address. And OK. I can add up to six contact names, six email addresses, six phone numbers and six addresses per contact record. So if I have um, partners looking for an investment opportunity, that's going to be the same transaction. I don't want to have to enter two separate contacts for that. I'm just going to add an additional contact name under Anne. I can identify who that person is to Anne, and we kind of cover all the bases there. We also have an other option. And I can enter Amy's information in there. So up to six, same with the email, same with the phone numbers. Now, Amy's the investor in our transaction here, and I want her information under this contact record. But Amy has requested that the system not send out any emails to her. She doesn't want to see the listings. That's going to be Anne's job. Um, she doesn't want to receive any mass emails from me. So I'm going to enter Amy's email address here, and I'm going to deselect receive emails. Now, when I save this, I'm going to have the opportunity to directly email Amy okay, by clicking on this envelope, but nothing will automatically go out to that email address. All right. Up to six phone numbers, six addresses. Method of contact is optional record keeping for myself. They told me they prefer me to text them. They don't want to talk to me via phone. Hopefully they do eventually, right? But their preference to communicate is text. They've said do not call. Additional information, nickname, spouse, children, family status. We have notes up to 4,000 characters. So the notes are special because they can appear on the contact main page. So if there is something that I want to pay attention to, I can type a note and it's going to appear on the contact main page. Events are unlimited. So I can go in. We're not limited to six here. I can identify birthday, anniversary, home sale, home purchase. And I also have a custom offering. And anytime you see something that says type custom text here, you folks have the opportunity to go in and type your own notation. So record keeping for myself. 
I can't believe we're almost through July, folks. I don't know where this year has gone. All right. So I'm making a note for myself that we put an offer on Main Street today. And then I could continue to add to that. Those are unlimited. Referral history, referral source. How did this person come to be in my life? Maybe it was an open house that I met them at. Um, maybe they sold a home or somebody referred them to me that had sold a home with me or purchased a home with me. Okay, and what property did that person sell or buy? All record keeping. And remember, the only two fields we had to add, first name and last name for the main contact, and typically you're going to add that email address. So I've saved this record. We're going to run through these items here. Email. If I email the contacts here, only the email address that has receive email selected will get this email. This is no property information. This is just a communication from myself to this customer. Okay, so we type in the information, send email. Remind, once we get a search in here, maybe you are going to choose to do a daily update. There's nothing wrong with that, folks, right? But we met with the customer at 11.55 a.m., and I tell them they're going to get their daily update immediately. That's actually not going to go out until tomorrow on the nightly reset between 4 and 8 a.m. But if I want that to go out now, I want to push that out immediately. I can go to email and remind. And I can choose matches in the previous 24, 48, or 72 hours. So maybe folks are on vacation right now um, and they come to you and they say, hey, Jeannie, we were away last week. Can you just send us a couple of days of property matches? That remind function would come in handy. Or we just set them up and we want to push out new property matches. You can type a message. Yes, I want to copy. Send email. Categories, we set those up when we first started. This is where I attach one or multiple categories to a contact. So you just check them off, hit OK. When we were under our options and settings, we talked about contact defaults. And that's what's represented under the settings option here. Okay, so we have the defaults here, um, display addresses, display open house info. So all of these currently are reflecting the default options that we set up. Now, maybe this customer is somebody I know wants an email every day. I can go to that email window matches. I know my default is no, but for this person, I'm going to set it to yes. Okay, and I'm going to hit OK. So I didn't change my defaults up here. I just changed the setting for this one individual. Now, Ann purchased a home today, and she says, hey, Jeannie, I do not want to receive listing updates any further. We want to avoid Ann unsubscribing which your customers, your contacts always have the ability to do at the bottom of their emails. We want to avoid that. So what we're going to do instead is we're actually going to archive the record. So archiving, when we hit that button, it comes up and it's basically telling us that the information is no longer going to flow to this customer if we archive them. I'm okay with that. So I hit OK, contact has been archived. In five years, when Anne's ready to buy and sell again, we're going to be able to retrieve her information and just activate it because she didn't unsubscribe from receiving listing updates. 
So to find her record again, all we have to do is go to our archived category on the left-hand side of the screen. So if I check that off, we can see Anne over here, as well as our other archived, I can check off Anne and I can activate the record. Before I do that, um, a lot of times I get the question, can I delete a record? Yes, you can delete a record. It's important to realize deletion is a permanent state. So if you delete, you're taking them out of the system forever. Um, the first step to delete a contact is to archive them. Then you have to go to your archived category, check off one or multiple contacts, and there's your delete. The system will automatically archive your contacts after 90 days of inactivity. Okay, so if they auto archive, we send you an email so you are aware that it's happened. That might be a great time to reach back out to that contact and say, hey, you know, the system's gonna stop sending you updates. Did you wanna receive these any longer? Are you still looking? What's the status? To activate an archived or an auto archived contact, you're just gonna check them off and activate. It'll come up. You're about to activate the selected contact. Are you sure you wish to continue? Yes. And it's gonna tell me they've been activated. Okay. So you really want to utilize that archive if they're no longer interested in looking so they can uh, you can avoid unsubscribing and re-entering the information when they come back to you and they're ready to buy and sell again. So we're currently on the information tab under a contact. If we look to the right, we have the searches tab. So there's a couple of different ways to attach searches to a contact. We're gonna start here. So under the information tab on a contact, we look to the right, we go to the searches tab and new contact search. We can utilize the search or a map search. We're gonna select search. Up at the top of the page here, very important note, the search name your contact sees in the daily update or in the 15 minute update, hourly update. So that in essence is their header and then they'll see results below it. So you wanna make it meaningful to your customers. So they see that header, their results will be listed below. To the right of that, we have a frequency option. And as we were setting up our contact defaults under options and settings, we chose a 15 minute frequency. I can change this frequency per search. So in theory, if I wanted to, I could set Anne up with 20 different searches. I'm gonna show you how to add some additional searches here um, and have a different frequency for those 20 searches. So that's completely up to you. I'm gonna choose never just because um, by the time I end my trainings, I usually have 50 emails in my inbox from the training. So I'm actually gonna put never there you folks likely are gonna choose that 15 minute hourly or daily. Let's talk about that weekly every Friday or monthly first day of the month too. Now you can send under agreement sold and rented information. So we talk a lot about contact manager from a buyer's perspective, but you could certainly use this if you are working with sellers who wanna be aware of like homes selling around them, okay? So I have a seller that has a three bedroom, two bath colonial with 2,500 square feet in Beverly. I'm gonna set up a search with under agreement and sold information. Maybe we just do it 
back a month and we're going to send that every month or weekly every Friday. Okay. That's just a nice warm and fuzzy way to kind of continue to reach out to your seller and say, here's what's happening in the market area, right? Um, likely many of your homes will not be staying on the market that long, but just might be something you consider doing. So you choose your frequency, notify when matches go under agreement sold or rented. If I set this to yes, when properties that have matched the customer's criteria um, are placed to under agreement sold or rented, the customer will receive an email based upon the frequency I've selected, informing them that those properties are currently off the market. We know inventory has been very low. We know homes are going on the market and coming off of the market very quickly. But consumers who don't work in the industry might not be aware of that. Um, and if they're not aware of that, they might take a little bit of time to reach out to you if they're interested in a property and they could miss out on things that could potentially be the home that they would love to live in, okay? Notify of upcoming open houses. This can be a little bit confusing, so I wanna be sure to clarify what this means. It is Wednesday, um, so I'm gonna choose next seven days for time frame. but notify of upcoming open houses. Even if I allow open houses to display on my list of results, this works a little bit differently, okay? Let's say uh, Anne received a property three weeks ago, 123 Main Street, and that property has an open house coming up in the next seven days. Well, Anne wouldn't get that resent to her, it would exist on her list. And because I allow open house info, she would see the little balloon with the date and time of the open house. But 123 Main Street would actually never get resent to her unless there was some sort of a status change, okay? If I set this to yes, 123 Main Street actually will get resent out to her because it has an open house coming up in my identified time frame. So it's kind of a way if properties have been on the list of results for a little bit and it's got an upcoming open house, it's kind of a way to kind of refresh it and send it back to the customer so they see that listing as well as the information about the open house. All right. And down below that, this is where you're gonna enter your search parameters. And let's just talk about searching for a moment. This search display is a little bit different um, than the search tab itself. We do not allow you to spend, send expired canceled listings or withdrawn listings over to a contact. So those statuses are omitted from contacts, but as I noted, you can send contingent under agreement sold or rented. So if you go in and you choose your property types and your statuses you wanna to send to a customer, we have a customer that says, Hey Jeannie, you know, I want three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 2,500 square feet. So I've entered the standard search criteria. I've narrowed it down because I certainly didn't want to look at almost 5,000 listings. The system stops um, results at 500 for your contact and for yourselves. So typically people don't want to look at 500 listings. So we need to narrow those parameters down somehow. But if I'm too narrow with the search criteria, I get very limited results. 
So right now we have single family condo, active statuses, three bedroom, two bathroom, 2,500 square feet. I have an added price and I have an added town. So there are exactly three listings in Finergy with that criteria. So you wanna be careful with being too narrow, folks. You know your customer has specific needs. So you can always range square footage. We can say three or more. You can use the greater than or less than symbol in these boxes. These question marks are help screens. So if I click on it, it will show me what I can list or how I can list a particular value in a field. Okay, so if you have any question on that. And if anybody is newer to the system and just starting out, um, the status help screen is very handy because it really defines all of those different statuses in Pinergy. Sometimes I've seen folks uh, do something like this when they're searching. And there's nothing wrong with that if you wanna see new MLS number submissions in the past three days. But if we're searching for a buyer and we wanna see everything that is active and available for that buyer, you're gonna leave those default statuses alone. Okay, it just simply means there's been some sort of a status change. Price points when you're searching for properties for sale, you're gonna enter those in $100 volumes. All right. And then you would list your cities and towns. Earlier today, we set up a custom coverage area under our options and settings. So typically you're gonna have the opportunity to search all of Massachusetts or a specific county. But if I've created those custom coverage areas, this is where I'm able to select it and it turns it into a time saver for you because now it's just gonna list the cities and towns that I've identified doing business in. So I don't have to scroll through all of Massachusetts or all of a county, I'm just gonna say I need to look at Beverly. And then you have your additional criteria here. I'm actually gonna remove the price and see if that helps our results. And maybe we'll get rid of living area. So you notice folks, Every time I change something, I'm getting a count. There we go. And usually you can pick up on what's kind of prohibiting uh, those results from coming up. And this leads me to a good point that less is more here, especially with the inventory that you folks are experiencing. Unless you have a customer that is very specific that they need X, Y, and Z, I would try to leave it off of the search results. We want to obviously give them what they need. They need three bedrooms, they need two bathrooms. But if you get too specific, you're going to take away results that they might be willing to consider. Oftentimes I think buyers give you a list of must haves and they purchase the opposite um, of what they told you they wanted. So. You don't wanna be too strict with your parameters here and miss out on a home that could potentially be of interest to them. So that's your standard search criteria. You do have some additional criteria down below here. And if we hit the select button, just a neat little trick for you. All of these items here represent data fields in about 86 pages of listing input forms. And even after 16 years, sometimes somebody will call me and say, hey Jeannie, where do I find a barn? Or where do I find a mixed use commercial? Or where do I find swimming pool? And I have to really think about it because 86 pages of data fields, that's a lot of information. So the trick I have for you, if you're searching for something specifically, and you go and click on select, you can actually type to find criteria. 
So if I'm looking for a barn, I can type barn and I can see that that falls under exterior features on single family and condo or garage description. So if I select that, I'm gonna make a selection in the right hand column that will only show me properties where the listing agent has identified it as having a barn, okay? If I make a selection in the pink column, it will exclude any listings where the agent has identified the property as having a barn. So pink is an exclusion. Right-hand column, we will only see results that have that particular feature, and then you can add it in. So we're dwindling. The more we add, the more results we take away. Okay. If we need to edit, we can edit. You saw I just actually switched um, my checkbox selection and that updated the count for me. To delete it out, I'm going to hit the X. Okay, so we add our criteria in. Now we're going to save. So there's our single family homes for sale in Beverly. I want to show you there's a couple of additional ways that you can attach search criteria to your contacts. So I'm going to head out of contacts and I'm going to go to a search. So let's say we've already set Ann up as a contact in Pinergy. I've gone to the Pinergy search page and I'm doing a search in here. And I find some results based upon this criteria that I really think that Anne would love. I don't want to have to duplicate the search under the contacts tab. I can actually just come up to the top here and there's an attach button. You would still name it. They see that in their email. Choose your frequency, choose the other parameters there. And not only can I attach this criteria to Anne, but I can say, you know what, this would be good for D and great for Jack, and I think Jeannie would like it too. And attach. It's asking me, are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, I do, I hit okay. And now on that next 15 minute cycle at 1230, all of those folks, as long as they're set up for that 15 minute update, are going to get these five results um, and any new results thereafter based upon the search parameters on this page. And then the other way you can do this, sometimes I'll have folks ask if they can see the results prior to attaching search parameters to a contact and you can so again contact has to be set up i'm on the search page in pinergy i've entered my criteria i'm going to view the results so i look through these results and i say you know what this is these are great these are exactly what my customer told me they wanted Yes, I want to attach these search parameters to my customer. There's an attach search function. Okay, so attach search, name it again. They see that in their email. Check off who the search is going to apply to and attach. It's asking me again, are you sure you want to do that? Yes. And now this search criteria has been attached to those four contacts. So that's a couple of different ways once you have a contact set up to attach your search parameters. Now, time saver for you, when you log into Pinergy and you want to see your contact matches. You want to see what Anne has been looking at. 
um, right on your Pinergy homepage, typically unless you've moved the widget, your contact matches is going to appear in the left-hand corner of the screen. We can go to Anne's information. And that's going to take me immediately over to the matches tab. So anything in pink is newly sent out today. Let's see. Let's see if we can get. Notice this, folks. This is some um, good insight here. I have 10 contacts. I just went to my contacts tab. These folks are all archived. They're actually not active, right? Last login, January uh, 22nd, 2021. Why am I only seeing my archived? Or maybe I come in here and I see nobody. Why is that happening? That's happening because you have a category selected that's prohibiting your active customers from displaying or your active contacts don't fall into the categories that you have selected. So all I have to do to get my active contacts back is clear all filters. Okay, and we're gonna go over to Jean here. Everything in pink, newly sent out today. These hearts indicate that Jean has identified uh, these properties as being a favorite, okay? Green stars indicate that the customer has requested a showing. And you will also know that because we're gonna send you an email with the showing request up to four times an hour. This symbol here indicates the listing has been removed from the customer's display. So either they deleted it or I hid it from their display. And you folks have the opportunity, let's say you've shown these properties and they say to you, you know what, Jeannie, I don't care for those properties. You can just get rid of them off of my list of results. I can check those off. I can go to hide, hide. And that will remove them from the customer's display. So I know they're no longer seeing them at all when the symbol exists next to the MLS number. Now, if they come back to you and say, you know what, 945 Main Street, we weren't initially crazy about it, but I've thought about it and I would like to take a peek at that listing again. I can check it off. I can go to hide, unhide. And that will put it back on their list of results. And one of the things uh, folks ask me often, Jeannie, I don't want to see the hidden listings. Can I take those out of my display? And you can. There is a category on the left here called hidden listings. So I can say, show me the hidden or not hidden. Right? So not hidden will take those hidden out of my display. Now I can just take a peek at. Um, what the customer is looking at. So we're currently viewing this in a line view. You have different ways for you as the agent to view this information. When I make a different selection here, this does not affect how my contact is seeing the information. This is simply for you as the agent. You do have a report type here called feedback. This is a little bit tricky, though. I would tend to sway you folks to just reading the feedback in your email um, because what can happen sometimes, let's say I go to the Pinergy homepage. I want to see uh, one of these customers' matches. So we go back to Jean. And I look in here and I say one listing. Jean should have more than one listing under this account. What is going on here? I forgot that I've changed the report type to the feedback report type and there's only one listing with feedback. So that gets a little bit tricky. 
Um, I know I live through my phone reading emails, so it's easy enough to get that information right in your hands. Um, but if that ever happens to you and you get stuck on something, you can always reach out to us and we can see if we can um, help figure out what's going on under your account. Usually something simple like a category is selected or the report type is something like the feedback report type. So now in here, I went back to the line view just because I think it's a little bit easier to see visually. And the line view has some special functionality. The other report types have similar functionality, but all of these headers are sortable. Okay. And there is a header here called views. So in the line view, we can actually sort by highest to lowest number of views. And the line view takes it a step further. So 109 Hartford Turnpike, I can see they looked at that property three times. The line view report type actually tells me not only have they viewed it three times, but the last time that they viewed it was 728, which is today. And we know the pushpin is an identifier to us that the customer is logged in and viewing property matches right now. So if I see, you know, they've looked at something five times, last time being today, they're logged in right now, I might pick up that phone and say, hey, Ann, or hey, Jeannie, I think uh, I have the perfect property for you. I think we should go see 109 Hartford Turnpike. So you got all of this information on your side. And you notice if you click into any of the open space, that actually pop, pops open a little additional information about that particular listing. And if you want to close it up, go to the right of the price, there's a down arrow that closes it. You can do some record keeping for yourselves. Maybe you get in the habit of identified, identifying the properties you've shown. To a customer, you can check those off. Have shown. This is record keeping for yourself. Shown. You can remove showing requests. So we've shown these properties. I can check it off. Remove showing. I can recommend properties. So I'm going to go through the list of results every day and see the properties that I think they would really, really love. It's, it checks off everything on their list. I can select those and I can actually recommend them. Okay, so lots of stuff you can do there. So this is your matches tab, which is easily accessed right from your Pinergy homepage. And I can actually go in and see everybody's matches. Okay, right from that Pinergy homepage, time savers for you. Otherwise, you're going to go into contacts, click on the contact name, and that'll get you to the matches tab. Or it actually will open up um, if you go in that manner to whatever tab you were last on. To the right of matches, we have a history option. And history is basically showing history of changes made to the contact record. So in here, if I click into any of the open space, I can kind of expand um, the change that was made and even see the MLS number, date and time it was made, and who it was updated by. So contact listings matches hidden by the contact. Maybe your customer calls you and they say, hey, Jeannie, I deleted a listing and I didn't mean to. I actually meant to favorite that one. I did it yesterday afternoon. So you could go into the history, expand it out and say, OK, it was this MLS number. We need to give that back to them. So that's your history tab. All the way to the left, we have an activity tab. And that provides you with some analytics. Last login, 
average number of logins, so every three days, twice per day. Average views per visit, seven. Average list price of views, 502,000, almost 503. Median list price of views. And then basically, you get some information in chart form. And you can reduce this down. This person um, is fairly new in here. So all time isn't bad for the chart time frame. But if you've had somebody set up for a while, you might want to condense down your chart time frame. Be easier to view. So I'm going to head to the contacts tab. And we kind of are at the home stretch as far as content, folks. I am going to talk about hot sheets after we finish up contacts. But if you do have questions pertaining to contacts, please feel free to get those sent over so we can make sure that I am addressing those before we move forward from here. So we know Jean's online right now, currently viewing property matches. This is your activity view. All of these headers are sortable. So I can sort oldest to newest, newest to oldest with last login. If I go to the contact info tab, I get some information here, which is a little bit different than the activity view. If I click into any of the open space, it kind of opens up a little more information about that contact. And if I need to edit the contact, I can hit edit contact, or I can click on the contact name and edit. Now, uh, an important to know here, the phone number has a strike through. That was just me identifying that that was a non-preferred contact method for this contact record. If you see a strike through through the email, generally, and you have to go to the information tab to see this, generally that's going to be a big identifier that they have unsubscribed from receiving emails. Okay, so you can see right here, um, the contact has unsubscribed from receiving email in compliance with a canned spam law, this contact can no longer be emailed. I've run into the situation where um, contacts will reach out to their agent and say they didn't mean to unsubscribe. Is there a way to kind of give their information back or get the search going again? The easiest way to go about that, folks, is actually just to re-enter a new contact. Um, the good news is we retain the whole contact record, so you can kind of just transfer it into a new contact. If we receive something in writing from the contact saying that unsubscribing was done in error, I think we would be able to help you too. Um, but re-entering the contact, I think, is probably just as easy as going through that process. So across the board, we can send email communications to multiple contacts at a time. That does not include property information. So that would be more like happy summer, happy fall, um, happy one year anniversary on home ownership. You have the remind function that you can utilize across the board. Maybe prior to today, you weren't aware of that categories option and you really like it. So you go in, you create categories and you want to apply those categories to multiple contacts. You can do that, you check off the folks you want to fall into a particular category or categories, select the categories you want them to fall into and apply. Okay, and you can do the th same thing with settings. So earlier I noted um, if you weren't aware of some of the contact default options and settings, whatever we did under options and settings was for anybody new here forward. 
if I have existing contacts and I want to update things like the photo summary report, this is how you would go about doing that. Check off the contacts that you need to update. So we're going to say yes to that, apply changes. So now, instead of getting an email with a line of information, they're going to get the email with the photo. Archiving and activating can be done for multiple records at a time. We can export contact information into any of these file types. So CSV for me is going to be an Excel spreadsheet. I can bump the fields over that I want to transfer, hit continue, and that's just going to populate the information into Excel for me. We can print the page, print the selected contact sheets, or print mailing labels. So I always go back again to that happy one year anniversary of home ownership. Maybe we're going to send a postcard. Obviously, you have to have the property addresses in there for that to be effective. And then you have a PDF option. Save this page as a PDF. Save the contact sheet as a PDF, the selected contact sheets. All right, folks. That's going to be the end of the contact management portion. We have one last topic to cover, and that's going to be hot sheets. And hot sheets can be accessed in a couple of different areas. If you go to tools, market reports, new report, you have the option to create a hot sheet there. You know I like time savers, so you can actually access and create your hot sheets right from the Pinergy homepage. So I have this widget. For me, it's on the left-hand side of the screen. If you've moved it, it might be elsewhere on your Pinergy homepage. But I can go here and create a new hot sheet. You're going to name it if you're going to save it, and likely you will. So what is a hot sheet? Really, a hot sheet's nothing more than a saved search. So I'm determining the statuses I want to be aware of in a particular area. So maybe in Beverly, I do a new and price change hot sheet every day. So I'm going to select new and price change. To skip active, I just held down my control key. If you have a Mac computer, you can hold down the command key and skip the one in between. Go to the right, click on under agreement. If we want to deselect everything on the right, hold down your control or command key, click on under agreement again. So currently, we're looking at new and price change listings. I'm going to select single and condo. And for the time frame, folks, if you are selecting a status change, so new price change back on market, extended, reactivated, I would recommend going back past three days. So that past three days actually will um, capture any of those status changes. Status changes last for a period of three days before reverting to an active status. And I'm going to select Beverly. Okay, so I choose my parameters. Um, we did do past three days. I want you to know you can choose a time frame. We have default time frames, but you can also choose a specific time frame. We have information data that goes all the way back to 1993. So you can choose a period of time between then and now. And I'm going to save this. So on the Pinergy home page, you see all of my hot sheets. 
And when I want to generate the results for a specific hot sheet, I just click on the name and that's going to bring me here. So I log into Pinergy every day and in Beverly, I'm always looking for new and price change. I click on my hot sheet report that's going to give me those current results, real time results. So as listings get added or change status, they're going to fall out or be added to that hot sheet report. I'm going to give you one of my favorite hot sheet tricks. And then we'll see if anybody has any questions. So I'm sure some of you probably utilize Pinergy to search for listing leads. And you might do that by looking at expired canceled listings. Just because a listing is in the system as expired or canceled doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't relisted under a different MLS number. So you folks want to be careful for that. Um, typically, you would have to go in and research property history just to make sure that it, it wasn't relisted and you're not reaching out to somebody who's potentially um, under contract with another firm okay, or office. So I have a trick with the hot sheet and I usually use Worcester because I usually get some good results with that. So I'm going to go to the home page, create a new hot sheet. So this is going to be my expired, canceled, never relisted in Worcester. And the name is just for me to be able to identify. I'm going to leave all of those statuses alone. Okay, I'm actually going to leave everything selected. I'm going to select single family. And I'm actually going to go year to date in Worcester. And I'm going to save that. Go to my home page. Select my hot sheet report. Now the key here to get property addresses to layer on top of each other is to use the three little dots here that say more. These are advanced sorting options. So I'm actually going to sort by the address. So I'm going to go to more. And I'm going to select street name, street NO, and street NUM. Okay, so I'm sorting by street name and street number, and I hit sort. So let's see. In here, we have five Amber Street. Those are two expired listings. That one appears to be fair game. Hasn't been relisted. So let me see if I can find one for you. So visually you understand why I kept all of those statuses. 34 Christine Street looks like fair game. So in theory, if something has been canceled or expired and is relisted, Seven Crown Street, we have an expired and a canceled. They're going to fall on top of each other. And I'm going to know if it's in an active status that I'm not going to reach out to the seller of that property. Okay. So right here, do you have an expired? So if I didn't do this, I would have to research that um, property history to see that even though this listing is in here as expired, it was actually re-entered under a new MLS number and recently sold. So I'm not going to reach out to that seller because I can see even though it's expired, it was relisted under something else. Same thing, 11 Forest Hill Drive canceled, but it was re-entered under a new MLS number and is now contingent under that new MLS number. So I wouldn't reach out to that because it's under contract. 
okay? So again, the trick or the way that I was able to alleviate the need to check property history was I used the advanced sorting options and I sorted by street name, street NO, or street NUM, okay? And then you sort. So it put everything on top of each other, um, all of the different statuses, because we had all of those different statuses selected. All right, folks. So that is actually gonna be the end of our content. I am gonna hang on for a few moments and see if we have All right, guys, I don't know if you have any specific questions or not, but that's pretty much the uh, the video for the webinar. It's pretty, pretty detailed. What do you guys think? Agreed. Yeah, did you find it useful? Oh, absolutely. My first time that I'm looking at this card, so I'm like, new, new. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think um, it's it's very helpful and and definitely if you want to rewatch that webinar, you know you can get it um, by looking at our uh, our what now dashboard, and I have a note that I'm going to send you um, the links for the you know where the business builder class is also upload. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, did you have anything specific you had a question on or you want me to cover? Um, I think I'm okay for now. Okay. All right, Houston, how about yourself? No, I'm okay, thank you. You're good as well, okay. All right, guys, well, I won't keep you then. And uh, I'm sure Kathy will be sending out the link for today's recording anyway, but um, I'll make sure that I send you uh, what I promised Alona, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Scott. All right, guys. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.